How to Protect Yourself Against Psychic Hoovering by Kim Saeed Narrated by Eva Gray It's unsettling. It's eerie. It's downright inexplicable. You've gone no contact and then experience episodes similar to these. You drive by the restaurant that you and your narcissistic ex used to frequent together and suddenly they call you. You're flipping through the channels one night and come across the romantic comedy the two of you watched at that quaint retro movie theatre when you first started dating. Your phone jingles. You look at it and realise with surprise that your ex has sent you an email. You're doing laundry one lazy Saturday morning and find an old t-shirt they left behind. You pick it up, gently pressing it to your face to see if it still carries their scent. You suddenly feel their presence so strongly you could almost swear they're in your house somewhere. It's moments like these that may convince you that the narcissist is destined to be your lifelong companion. You begin to believe that the troubles in the relationship must have been the result of an inevitable, tempestuous bond between tortured soulmates. You feel cosmically connected to them and mourn the phantom limb absence of your lost partner. You suffer pain and damage by punishing yourself for your mistakes and some of the reckless things you did while in the relationship. If they are trying to reach you during your moments of sorrow and distress, then surely the two of you share a bond. You feel a sudden, consuming need to connect with them. You can't just deny this psychic link the two of you share. To do so would be to delay destiny. You pick up your phone and dial their number thereby opening yourself up for months or years of continued emotional abuse and defilement of your soul. Why does it seem the narcissist knows exactly when to reach out? How do they sense when you're at your lowest point? While you may indeed share a bond, you shouldn't interpret it as a divine sign that you belong together. There are generally two explanations for the above-mentioned scenarios, neither of which have to do with you and the narcissist being star-crossed lovers. 1. You're being monitored and need to reset your phone and computer to protect yourself from spyware that may have been planted on your devices. You'll also want to have your vehicle checked for a GPS tracking device. It happens. Not only was I personally monitored this way, many of my clients have been as well. When it comes to narcissists, truth is definitely stranger than fiction. 2. You're being hoovered psychically. This may seem like a bizarre concept to some, but it's really nothing more than the pull of energetic ties, or cords, that you've created with a narcissist. These energetic bonds are deeper when emotional trauma has been a core element of the relationship. One of the most important things we can do for our soul's health and growth is cutting cords that still bind us to toxic relationships. Many people don't realise that when you have a relationship with someone, you become connected energetically, especially when there is a strong emotional event, such as emotional and soul abuse. When we are intimate with someone, we create energetic ties and also make subliminal contracts with the other person. You may strongly feel and believe that those ties and vows are still binding today, as would any empathic individual with strong moral codes. But whereas you want to soothe the narcissist's hurts and help them feel secure, they simply want to siphon your compassionate energy from you, like fuel for an engine. Although they may be simultaneously thinking of you as you're thinking of them, it's usually during your moments of emotional vulnerability because this is the energetic state you were in when they manipulated you during the relationship. Even after a relationship ends, the energetic ties remain, despite the amount of time that elapses, and even though you may be apart from them now, you're still deeply bonded to them energetically. This can drain your energy, as well as cause symptoms of depression and hopelessness. This is partly why many people continue to obsess about their narcissistic ex, and feel the pain of past traumas as freshly as when they first occurred. 
The process of cutting ties on all levels of your energy and awareness is a crucial step in removing any energetic cords that you share with a narcissist. This is the only way your soul can move on towards healing. Not cutting cords often results in getting stuck in a low frequency cycle where the same disappointing events keep happening repeatedly. Unresolved energy ties will attract you to people, places and events that resonate with the frequency of that emotional trauma. So when you do enter into another relationship, you will have a tendency to project onto your new relationship all of the emotional pain you've stored from the one with the narcissist. While this concept may seem overwhelming, there are ways to protect yourself so you can close the chapter and move on towards healing and happier relationships with yourself and others. Ways to protect yourself. One, if you haven't blocked and deleted the narcissist from your phone, now's the time to do it. Anything else only leaves you vulnerable to their hoovering, psychic and otherwise. If you share children with your ex, Change your cell phone number and have them contact you by landline or email. Use a supervised email system if necessary, such as Our Family Wizard. 2. Perform a cord cutting ceremony at least once a week until the energetic ties are gone. 3. Smudge your home to cleanse it of negative energies and memories. 4. Consider purchasing crystals that are specific to psychic protection, such as black tourmaline, amethyst, hematite, and tiger eye. 5. Try dabbing some lavender or sandalwood essential oil on the back of your neck for cleansing and protection. If you have sensitive skin, make sure to blend with the carrier oil first. For those of you who are afraid of the finality of cutting energetic ties with a narcissist, it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't love the person anymore or no longer care about them. The process is meant to cut the dysfunctional traumatic cords that you share with the other person. Although you should still maintain no contact for obvious reasons, you can still care for your toxic ex, but you should do so from a distance. Once you begin healing the core wounds that bound you to the narcissist, you will find that your attachment to them will get weaker over time and you will eventually become empowered enough to release them completely. And of course, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You may also enjoy Kim's online course, The Essential No Contact Bootcamp, for step-by-step -step guidance on detaching from love that hurts and starting your healing journey.